Uh, okay, well, wonderful. So we're gonna wait for some people to join in, but for those of you that are watching, my name is Alyssa Ojeda, and I am the Marketing and Public Relations Manager for Grand Canyon Conservancy, and we have a very special guest today, one of my favorite artists, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I'm going to, uh, Michelle Condrat. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Michelle? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I am good. I, you know, we just wrapped up our whole week of planar painting, as you know, at the canyon, and we are so excited to now like shift from kind of that in person and at the canyon focus to the now building out a lot of our continuation of online engagement with this interview being one of them. So it's it's a great time to start to really gear up our website and some of these more digital content pieces. So, okay, I'm just gonna. As you guys start to join in, please put your hometown. And if you have any questions for Michelle or myself, add those in the comments and we'll make sure that we ask Michelle live. Uh, we have a few <laughs> questions already queued up for her. So, so nothing too hard hitting, but if you do wanna know something about Michelle, her process, anything about her art, uh, please put that in the comments and we will monitor it and I will make sure that we can ask them all live. So Michelle, do you mind just giving us a little bit, what is your background and how did you get into plain art painting? Yeah, um, so I'm an oil painter from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I've lived here pretty much my whole life. Um, I got my BFA at the University of Utah, and um, so after I graduated, I got a part-time job at an art supply store, which was really awesome because I got really good discounts, <laughs> which I needed, <laughs> and it was a really good way for me to connect with the art artists and the art community in Salt Lake City. Um, so I worked there part-time and I also worked on my artwork part-time. So I did like local shows, I did arts festivals and things like that. And um, I did that for a little over 10 years actually. <laughs> and um, finally my art career got so busy that my job was kind of getting in the way. And so I decided, you know what, I think it's time to quit and take that leap and become a full-time artist. And I did. And that was actually really recently. That was just in August of 2018. So I've only been a full-time artist for just over two years, actually. <laughs> so um, that was like the best decision I ever made. And uh, I've never looked back. <laughs> um, as for getting into plain air painting, um, after college, I did some local plein air shows throughout Utah, and uh, I got connected with other artists that did even bigger plein air events, like uh, the Zion National Park plein air invitational. And um, so I got in contact with them, and I applied, and I did Zion, uh, I see my first year was 2013. So I did that for a few years. And then I met a man from the Grand Canyon, who actually worked at Colt Studio, and he really liked my work, and he's like, you need to apply to the Celebration of Art. And so it actually took me like two years to apply. <laughs> like I was thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I should do it, but it took me like two years. So I finally applied to the Grand Canyon, and I got accepted. And um, my first year was in 2016. So that's how I became one of your artists, and I've done that event ever since then. So. Well, we are absolutely thrilled to have you. Even you, you have such a different take on the canyon, and, and I do want to talk a little bit about the pieces that we have in our backgrounds today. So as we're starting to get some more viewers tuned in, I just want to give everyone a refresher. Uh, my name is Alyssa Ojeda, and I'm with Grand Canyon Conservancy, and we are interviewing Celebration of Art artist Michelle Condrat. And we are, if you have comments, we'll ask them live, put it in the comments, please let us know. We would love to just see your feedback too, and uh, give us a wave and let us know where your hometown is. And since we couldn't be at the South Rim, so I had to pick one of Michelle's paintings as my background today so that you can feel a little bit like you're there, but then also you get to really see another sample of her work. So Michelle, would you mind just talking uh, a little bit about the two paintings behind you as well, and then also about the one that I have behind me? Yeah. Yeah, so actually, so this one, <laughs> this one I painted for the Zion National Park Plain Air event. Uh, they usually have the artists come, but because of this year, uh, they decided to do the whole show online. 
And so this one is actually still available. This is a scene of the Great White Throne, which is one of my favorite places to paint. <laughs> So that show is going on right now, and there, there are uh, five other artists that are participating in that. Um, and then this one is a little corner one here. <laughs> um, this is a painting that I did of some uh, aspen trees that are in Utah, and it's like my favorite place to paint. It's the Uinta Mountains. So kind of different. There's I got the red rock, and then I have my more mountain scenes here. <laughs> so. So you have a, a unique style, at least from what I've experienced with other artists. Do you mind talking to a little bit about how you would describe your style and how you've really crafted this specific look? Yeah, you know, people always ask me like, how did I develop this style? And you know, it's actually been like years of developing it. Um, it's not something that I just started off with. Um, long ago, <laughs> I used to be like a really photorealistic painter. Like I would paint things like, all the details. And so throughout college and after, I kind of broke out of that. I got really interested in uh, breaking up edges of the subjects. Um, I got really into how much detail do I have to put into the painting, but also let your eye fill in the rest. And so um, I started working on that a lot and kind of developing this style. Um, what what really worked out well was that it it lent itself really well to painting red rock because the rocks are already so linear already and my brush strokes are very horizontal and vertical and so it really translated well to things like the grand canyon and zion national park so it's been years i mean it wasn't like something i just started off doing <laughs> but i've been developing it and and I, i'm kind of liking where it's at right now Thank you for that explanation. It's always great to see how people, or, or excuse me, artists, how they tailored their craft and really being able to make it personalized to your own style. Yeah. So with this year, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the activities we had last week. So how has your experience been this year as you've seen a lot of these other events shift to online as well as for us shifting off celebration of art to online? What was your take and what did you think about it? No, I actually really liked it. I mean, of course, I would rather have been there, but um, I think it was really great. I think it was it was great because people that normally wouldn't be able to go to the Grand Canyon at that time or even participate in the sales, they were actually able to do that, especially with the online auction. And I love the online auction, to be honest. I, I like to be able to go online and I could see like everyone's uh, prices and how they would go up. And that was actually really exciting to see. Um, I also like that they put the, the buyer's names. So you could see like these bidding wars that were like, they were like going against each other. <laughs> so it was actually really fun to like check up on that. And I, I thought it was really great actually. You know, it was a new process for us, but I have to admit, I really enjoyed it too. Being a gal and more marketing, driven the social media aspect of it is it was it was like these real-time updates of like okay <laughs> let's check and see who's on top of today with the bidding wars and it was really neat and so you know what was really exciting about this opening weekend so your studio piece has already sold as well as your auction piece and your auction piece i think the final let me look it up your final bid price was one thousand two hundred and eighty dollars so that's incredible because that really comes back to helping us again in going towards a dedicated art venue at the South Room as well as arts programming. And you really had a great opening weekend. And so we actually only have four pieces of your art left. Oh, it's like, cool. <laughs> 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 yes, and it will be great. So for people that are watching, I do just want to give a shout out. So Hannah, it's great to see you. Bernadette from Detroit, our, our Michigan near Detroit. Thank you for watching. Um, Veronica. Oh, I love it. She is from Florida. She says, Condratism is amazing. I love your style. <laughs> Look at your, your own verb now. <laughs> and Gregory, thanks for watching today as well. Um, he also just says, those are beautiful paintings. You have a unique vision. So just wanted to give a shout out for those viewers. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, and again, if you have a question, yeah, feel free to comment it. And same thing, Anne, love it. That's great feedback too. She says, love your work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we hit a little bit on this and you're transitioning, you know, getting inspired by those red rocks and some of the more linear lines. 
But what specifically for Grand Canyon is your draw there? Where did your passion for painting there start? You know, I mean, I know it's cliche to say, but I mean, everything about the Grand Canyon is inspiring. I mean, it's like the plein air painter's dream to be there. Everything about it, the colors, the lighting, uh, everything is just perfect, <laughs> you know? Um, one thing I really like about painting the Grand Canyon is that, I mean, it does lend itself well to my style, but I like that I can paint it in my style and I can share my interpretation of it. And to be honest, that's one of the best things about the celebration of art is you get to see all the artists' individual styles and their interpretations, and you get to see it all in one place. And so I think that's one of the coolest things about this show is to see what all these other artists are seeing. For someone who's maybe coming up to Grand Canyon or who has maybe just getting started into painting, what tips do you have for them that you would share? Uh, just like starting art and, and painting in general? Yeah. You know, I have a lot of people ask me that. They're like, you know, how do I get started? You know, I, I'm interested in doing it. And honestly, my advice is just do it. Just start painting, get your materials, get anything that you want and just start doing it. You know, don't let the, those questions of, is this the right thing to do? You know, is, am I doing it correctly? Don't let those things like come into your mind. Um, don't focus so much on what it's supposed to look like in the end. Care more about the process and the, the actual making of the art. You know, I mean, yeah, I ask myself those questions, you know, is it looking right? Like, am I generally going in the right direction? You know, I, I ask myself that too. But probably the biggest question that I ask myself is, why not? You know, I'll be painting and I'm like, should I put a tree here? Yeah, why not? You know, should I, should I make it blue? Why not? You know, it's my art. I, I this is what I'm going to do. And um, it gives me that freedom of doing what I want. And I'm not so obsessed about like making it right. You know, the best thing about art is that there are no right answers. You know, it's not like a math equation where you come up with that right answer. It's, it's whatever you want it to be. And so just make the art. And like I said, don't worry about what it's gonna end up being or like, you know, is it gonna look right in the end? Just have fun doing the process and enjoy it. And I think that's what art should be. So that's my advice. <laughs> I think you got it right. Just when you said, just get out there and try it and just really making it your own. And, you know, looking at of how you've really taken this personal take. I, I would love to spend some time talking about some of your paintings. And I know all of your Grand Canyon paintings are currently at Grand Canyon waiting to be sold or go into the online exhibition. So we have photos of them. Would you mind talking through a little bit of each of the pieces that we have? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Which one do you want to start with? And I can pull mm. it up. Let's start with, let's just start with Dreamland. That's my main studio painting. Um, um, beautiful. Okay, it's going to be coming up here in just a second. Okay, so the, for those of you guys watching, we're just going to take a look at Michelle's studio piece, Dreamland. Yeah. Okay, are you guys able to see it? Yeah. Maybe just give I me a thumbs it. up. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So this is my main studio painting that I did. It's a 24 by 36. And um, so I like to talk about this painting because when I painted it, I kind of wanted to give the viewer a sense of like, is this place for real? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> whenever I go to the Grand Canyon, like that's what I think. I look out across the canyon and I, I'm just like, how is this place even real? I mean, it's just amazing. And so I, that's also why I titled it Dreamland because it's almost like a place that you could only come up with in your dreams, you know? But sometimes I have to remind myself, it's like, okay, this place actually is a real place. And it just amazes me every time I see it. I mean, no matter how many times I look out across the canyon, it just, it just amazes me every time. And so I kind of wanted to try and capture that or that, that feeling with this painting. And do you mind talking a little bit about the difference of when you do a studio piece versus a plein air piece that we might look at um, coming up on 
do you paint from a photo? Is it, you know, a, a time that you were there that then you're recreating in your studio? Yeah, so um, this is actually from a photograph that I took on uh, the last day I was at the Celebration of Art last year. And um, it was just the last day, the sun was setting. It was a little sad for me because I knew I was gonna go home. <laughs> but the lighting was so perfect and so this one is actually from a photo and um one thing that i can do when i work on a studio painting is you can kind of see like where the sun is setting how the light is just kind of going across the canyon i'm able to get that effect by doing washes with my paint and a wash is like a really transparent uh color basically so i take some paint and i i basically water it down. So I'm able to give it that nice gradient across the canyon, where in my plein air paintings, I'm not able to do that so much because they're still wet. So you have to wait for the whole painting to dry before you can do that. And approximately how long would you say it took you to paint this piece from start to finish with that process in there that you added in? Um, um maybe just a couple weeks or so. I mean, it's not like, eight hour day a couple weeks but you know <laughs> from start to end I'm also working on other pieces at the same time but a lot of it is is actually that drying time um so around there a, a week to two weeks great okay I'm gonna stop this one and let me just check and see we got some good comments from people who just said it's gorgeous and magnificent thank you Christy and Anne Okay, uh, let's pull up another one. Uh, let's see, which one would you like to talk about next? Uh, let's talk about basking in the sunlight. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Good. So this, so this rock formation um, is when you visit Yaki Point. Um, and I'm pretty sure every artist has painted this. I mean, it's like one of the main rock formations that like everyone has painted this. And I, I've painted it before too. But um, this one, I kind of changed it up just a little bit with my background. As you can see, it's like a really, it's way more simple background than some of my other paintings. And I wanted to do that because I just wanted to really focus on the rocks and bring those out. And so I also chose that really bright blue background because I wanted it to contrast with the yellow and orange of the rocks. And so the background's just actually a little more abstract than what I usually do, but I was just kind of playing with that. Like, again, like how, how much do I have to add, but yet still get the point across with that background. And so that one was, was kind of fun to do. Um, and like I said, everyone's painted that rock formation, but I just, I kind of wanted to just, have it look a little different than usual and i'm sure it has a name too but i'm really bad with the names of everything out there so if anyone knows just let me know yes please put it in the comments and, and you'll see a few other paintings uh, from this same location when we launch the online gallery on friday as michelle mentioned it is a popular spot but it is it's just such a neat rock formation there and again this is out from yaki point okay let's stop that one and I do, um, or here, let me pull up another one. And then I do want to talk more about how we've really translated your art into a lot of different things now. Um, let's see. Which other painting do you feel you want to share today? How about It's a Beautiful Morning? <laughs> this was my all-time favorite one. My spouse and I were like trying to debate. We were thinking of buying it, and then we were not fast enough. It's so pretty. Yeah, so this one, so this was up in Hope, at Hopi Point, and it was in the morning, and I really liked the way it turned out with the lighting in the background, highlighting the trees. It was kind of a hazy morning, too, which actually worked out really well, because I was able to get a lot of depth with the, the canyon. But, so this is funny, the reason I chose this painting is if anyone who knows me knows that I am not a morning person at all. <laughs> like, it's, it's kind of like the worst thing to be if you're a plein air painter because while everyone else is out there painting like two hours, 
I'm trying to get out of bed and trying to like get up to the canyon, <laughs> like it's so bad. So I wanted to, to talk about this painting because it was one of my rare morning paintings that I was actually able to do. <laughs> In fact, if you look at most of my Grand Canyon paintings, the lighting is all from one side, usually because it's all in the evening. <laughs> I just have the hardest time waking up. So I just wanted to, to show this because I was proud that I actually got up there early enough to get a good, sh good morning shot. <laughs> hey, I, coming from a fellow non-morning lover, I <laughs> totally get it. So maybe that's why I'm so drawn to this because that's not a view I typically see <laughs> at the canyon myself. I was so proud. I was like, wow, I'm making it for the sunrise, <laughs> like, it's so sad, but, you know, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I'm always the last artist at the canyon, like, every morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, okay, so Gregory uh, just put a comment in, so how about a canyon of colors? I yeah. don't have a photo of that one up right now, but do you want to talk just a little bit about to that one, Michelle? Yeah, that was my studio painting that I did, I want to say three years ago. Um, three years? Okay, I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, and that one, it actually had, had it was down in the canyon and it had the water. And, um, you know, I, I titled it that because there were just so many colors reflecting on the rocks and on the water. And honestly, when I paint the canyon, I use just like every color. I mean, and my palette, is really big. Like my my basic palette consists of 32 colors. So <laughs> um so that's why I titled it that. And um yeah I think that was that was my second year at the celebration of art. So that was my studio painting for my second year. I haven't been able to pull it up yet. If I can find it I'll try to go back and add it. I know we have it somewhere. I just <laughs> don't have it queued up quite yet. Uh but I'll keep trying. Sorry, Greg. Okay. Or Gregory. Thank you so much, though. And I would love now, so your art has this unique flair to it. And so we really now been able to see the transition from it, not only on the canvas to other projects. And I was going to try to share a photo that I take last year, actually, for the centennial. We used one of your wine or one of your paintings on a wine bottle for a oh, special yeah. event that we did. So we took it off the canvas and we were able to really wrap it as a full bottle and I'm, I'm going to pull this images up because I just think it's so neat and the way it came out was really beautiful and I believe it was last year's studio piece that we had used for it mm -hmm. and sorry yeah. I had it on my phone and it's pulling up now but this new project you're working on do you want to give everyone maybe a little teaser about it yeah so I got asked to do a design and it's going to be put on a Pendleton blanket so <laughs> they actually made one last year for the centennial. Um, I was actually going to do a design for that last year, but we just ran out of time and we couldn't nail anything down. So they used a different design, which I think turned out great. That blanket was awesome. <laughs> so I did a design this year. And so I actually have, I have the original painting. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> So this is the design and it's going to be woven onto a Pendleton blanket. So I'm really excited about that. Um, it's kind of neat too, because a lot of people think that my art looks like textile art or like quilting because there's so many like patches of color. So I'm like, oh, that's really cool. It's actually gonna be on something like that. <laughs> so, so this is the design here. And um, to be honest, it was really hard. <laughs> It was really hard for me to do like any plain air painting was so much easier to do than this design which I know it sounds ridiculous like it looks like it's so much more simple but that was the problem so Pendleton has these guidelines that you have to do for the designs so what they do is basically every row consists of two colors of stitching so you can only have each row have each row can only have two colors but the combination of them can make a third color. So I'm used to just grabbing paint, blending it, doing, you know, doing whatever I want. Well, with this, I had to consciously think, okay, this color can make this color. And I had to really simplify the design. And it was so hard for me to wrap my head around that. I don't know why. I was just like, ah. 
So I finally, I finally got it. <laughs> we finally nailed down the design and um, it's in production right now. It takes like at least 12 weeks to get them done. And um, they're, going, they're going to be selling them in 2021. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what month, but it's, it's coming out really soon. So <laughs> we'll make sure we let you guys know when that blanket's available. We'll have it on our online store as well as our in stores. And just a huge shout out to Christy Spivey and her team for really helping to make this vision come to life because I, I am thrilled. Veronica, I know you just said you're excited we will all be wrapping ourselves up in your beautiful blanket in 2021. <laughs> and, and I'm curious too, for the painting that you chose, you know, having to keep that color blocking in mind, again, was that something that you had already kind of had a vision for? or Where was your inspiration for that painting specifically? Well, I, so I knew basically what I wanted to have in it. I wanted to have the river because that's really important. And I, I wanted the clouds too, so I wanted that nice contrast with the sky. So I knew about kind of what it would look like and the view, but uh, it was just a matter of making it really simple and it wouldn't be like printable on, on a, so um, that, yeah. I, I knew what I wanted to, to show. I just had to figure out how to put it together, basically. <laughs> <laughs> So stay tuned. Another thing to look forward to in 2021, a great Pendleton blanket. And we'll let you guys know when that's out. But I'm so excited to have that sneak peek. And so I'm going to show just two other things while I just have them up. So one of these is the wine bottle that we did. Oh, yeah. You know, I never actually saw it. Oh, cool. You did it? Oh, my gosh. I actually have, we have some for you at the South Rim. We had used these again for an event. And, and it was just so fun. We called it Canyon Red. And it was a oh. centennial wine that we had did. And so thank you for letting us translate your art into something, again, not even a blanket, but a beverage. That is so cool. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love so the name Paul, too. <laughs> I know. Paula Swain, if you're watching, I heard that you might be tasked with delivering a bottle maybe on your drive through to Michelle, but we'll, we'll make sure we get you one, Michelle. We do have some set aside for you. <laughs> Awesome, thanks. <laughs> okay, and then I also found your studio painting. So I do want to pull this up because Gregory did have another question about it. And this, man, this one was absolutely stunning. Um, there it is. So yes. So he was curious if this one was from a photo or if this is another one where you were on site, if you can just kind of circle back and talk about now that at least I have it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so this was actually from a photo. Um, it was uh, a photo that I, I wanted to, to do a scene that was in the canyon, so not just on the rim. Um, so this one is from a photograph. I'm not sure exactly where it is. <laughs> I can't remember where it is. Um, but I really, I, I really like to paint water and I just love the reflections that were on the water and um, just all the colors that were reflecting everywhere. So that's why it's called a canyon of colors. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do think, again, that water tie-in and then you have, you know, this darker side over here, but then that reflection on the right, it's, it really is very beautiful. And this was a little, this was larger, I think, or 29 by 29. So. I'm trying to think of your, was your studio this year a little bit bigger? Than that? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a horizontal. Yeah. This year was 24 by 36. Wow. And you, yeah, that one's so what's funny is like a lot of times when you think of the Grand Canyon, you think that they should always be kind of like a long horizontal format, but this one's actually a square. And sometimes I think the square formats work really well uh, with the Grand Canyon. Um, like the one that I talked about basking in the sunlight, that one was a square composition and sometimes it works out really well. I mean, you always think it should be like some big long panoramic view, but um, that, that was one that I actually did of a square and I like the way that one turned out. I, I agree with that. I think the panoramic is almost sometimes a given and it's, it's assumed based off of the way the canyon exposes itself. But the square really hones you in so you can really focus on a specific part. And it's a unique angle that you don't necessarily get uh, from when you're actually just standing out the rim to really zone in on just that square part. So, uh, so thank you, Gregory, for bringing it up. I'm glad we were able to find it and share it with the rest of the viewers. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> 
Okay. So uh, actually, and Sharon actually just prefaces for us. So people that want to learn more about you and your art, where can they find you? And she mentioned that you may, you have prints on Etsy as well. Yeah, I have a few prints that I sell on Etsy. Um, probably, probably the best place to see my newest work would be on Instagram or Facebook. That's where I post most of my images. And it's just my name. It's just Michelle Condrad. Um, so, and I do have a website and that's michellecondrad.com. Great. And we will link that in the bottom too, or in the comments for you guys as well. So you can continue to check out Michelle's work and we will have the online gallery up on Friday of this week. So there's four of Michelle's paintings that are still available for sale that you guys will be able to check out and purchase if you like. And then we are already really gearing up and excited for next year's celebration of art. So make sure you guys save the dates that I, so sorry everyone, I literally just closed them right as I, this is what I, I'm trying, I was trying to bounce between windows and that's what happened. So, <laughs> um, I'll pull them back up. I'm so sorry, everyone. Save the dates for next year's celebration of art in 2021. And by then we'll definitely have the shelves for it. <laughs> Yay. We are, are looking looking <laughs> we are too. Do you have anything planned between now and, and then any other virtual events, any other interactions you have coming up shows? Not, no plein air events. Um, I'm, I'm just going to kind of stick to some studio work, but I might try to plan on some trips, some actual vacations that aren't art events, but like actually go on, actually go on a vacation and get some photos and stuff. So that's kind of my plan for the rest of the year. But yeah, a lot of things got canceled this year, but I'm really glad that you guys kept the event going this year. And I, I know all the other artists are really happy about that too. I think it was a real big success. It was definitely different. And I just want to say thank you to everyone, our, our sponsors and our supporters and our art collectors and buyers that really helped us pivot and really make it still happen. And the artists especially being so flexible and really willing to come and just kind of roll with the punches and a lot of the new CDC guidelines that we had put in place. So it was a great event and we are still keeping momentum strong. We'll have the gallery up through January. And again, they'll be available at shop.grandcanyon.org as of Friday morning, September 25th. So with that, I just want to thank our viewers today and we'll make sure we have a recording of this available on YouTube as well. So if you want to share it with a family member who's not active on Facebook, we will have that option available for you too. So thank you so much, Michelle. This was such a pleasure. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs>